Hey, happy Friday, everybody. Good morning to you. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, I'm going to give you a quick update on what's going on lately in the tropics, as well as a little bit of the severe weather. We still have the tornado threat, wind, and hail for today in the south. If you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe. I am all year long. Y'all hit the like button if y'all are enjoying these updates. Now, let's get right on into it. Remember, the links are in the description to help save you time. Now, the disturbance in the Pacific is still at 60% in the next five days and has gone to 10% in the next 48 hours. And we still have nothing for the next five days on the Atlantic side. I will keep this quick as possible. Also, the potential velocity anomaly, according to the Euro, is still showing that we have a very weak system that's coming to the East Pacific, potentially towards Mexico. And we still have all this dust coming in all the way to the middle of July. Plus the ones that is coming off the MDR. We still have that wave coming through, and I'm sure it's going to get elongated and stretched by the Bermuda High. Plus our cold front, our Arctic Oscillation, according to the Euro, is still have one coming down around the 16th through the 18th. And the GFS sees that as well, all the way to the 9th on this first one. And then we have that other one coming down from the 16th to the 18th. And the GFS is starting to still pick up that we still have this one coming down from the 20th all the way to the 25th. And this will create an extreme pattern, bring very extreme hot temperatures all the way up to the upper Midwest. And you can see the update on a Madden Julian oscillation according to the Euro, that after we go through the 7th and the 8th to the Northeast, because eight is your East Coast, seven being your West Coast, that it will dance around the Northeast and the North Atlantic all the way into 20. So this would not be coming to the South. This will be a cold front somewhere around the Northeast and the North Atlantic. And the update with the potential velocity anomaly according to the GFS, does still show that we have a stronger system coming to the East Pack, not weak like the Euro is seeing, as well as what's coming still potentially into our Gulf. Now this next extreme pattern that we're going in with our jet stream is going to contribute to this potential of this velocity getting pulled into our Gulf of Mexico and maybe towards the U.S. And you can see the setup here. This is your Pacific North American pattern. And this lets you know if you're going into a high ridge or a deep trough on the west coast of the U.S. And you can see as we go into the 15th and 16th, we'll be getting a dip going into a trough on the west side of the U.S. We're also going to get another one around the 20th through the 22nd on the west side of the U.S. So when you look at your NAO, your North Atlantic Oscillation, let's you know if you go into a ridge or a trough on the east coast of the U.S. You can see as we go also to the 16th through the 18th, when we get that little cold front, that we're going into a trough. So as we go into a trough on the west coast, we're going to go into a trough on the east coast. Also in the 20s as well, when we get that trough on the west coast, we're going to have it on the east coast. And that would make a big high ridge pulling very extreme high temperatures all the way up to northern U.S. And you can see this on the GFS, it's on the Euro as well. So as you go all the way to the 19th and beyond, you start getting a deep trough on the west coast of the U.S. and you go into a trough on the east coast. And that brings up this very high ridge. This is your 200 millibar, so you can see your jet stream. And that would bring up very hot temperatures, but that's also what's what the GFS is seeing is also pulling this potential tropical system towards us because of this very high ridge. And with that very high ridge, it's gonna pull all these very warm temperatures all the way up to the north. All this pink is over 100. And you can see this on your eight to 14 day outlook as you go from the 17th all the way to the 23rd, that you're gonna be on a very high ridge pulling all these above average temperatures for everybody. Now, I took myself out of the shot so you can see this. This is what it looks like on the 18th, and you can see all the hundreds going all the way up to the upper Midwest, southeast, also the southwest. It's because we're going into that extreme pattern of a very high ridge, a low trough on the west coast, and a trough on the east coast. And this will last about three days. Now remember, this is not your heat index, this is only your temperatures. And when they get these temperatures, it is in the shade, guys. This is not the hottest point to take these temperatures. These are your temperatures in the shade. At the same time, that's why you see in this storm come all the way to the coast because we have this very high ridge and it's just pulling this all the way to the north. 
Matter of fact, it's been trending the last three runs almost in the same spot. And you can see this here. This is your 0Z run, and it brings it all the way towards Louisiana as a 959. If we look at the previous run, brings it to Louisiana, 979. If we look at the previous run before that, Louisiana, 967. So it has been trending in the same location for the last three runs. Also, when you look with the Ural, you can see that the Ural sees this pattern set up as well. We're going to go into an extreme trough on the West Coast. We're going to go into a trough on the East Coast, and we're going to have this big ridge in the northern of the U.S. And it's going to pull all these temperatures, and if anything's in the tropics, in the Caribbean, in the Gulf, it will pull this up as well. So if you look at the previous run according to the Euro, you can see that the system comes into the East Pack. That's what's been trending as well as the Canadian model. But the previous run showed that it does start heading north after it goes to the East Pack. Starts going back towards the Caribbean. And on the Zero Z run, it stopped heading north and it started going back west because it's seen that it's being blocked by all this dust that we still have traveling through the Caribbean. But if you take a look at the update on the dust, you can see starting on the 15th that that first energy does get suppressed to the Bay of Campeche, just like I showed you on Global Tropics. But it does still get thinned out, very thinned out for the Caribbean. And it does go towards the Gulf of Mexico before we get this next plume that moves in behind it. Now the Ural sees that this plume will move this to the west. That's why it changed its track. And the GFS is still thinking that it could make it on in there. Now, even though the Farmer's Almanac is expecting a tropical storm for Texas and Louisiana, I'm really hoping that the Euro is correct on this because what we've been seeing in the last few runs has been very strong and the last three runs has been almost the same place. And it's really too early and nobody really needs that at this point, whether you want one or not. I just think you're just too young and too excited to want one because nobody should want any of this coming towards them. But if you look at the update on the dust, you can see that the first one does still form up and it goes to the west over by the Bay of Campeche and it gets pushed by the high pressure of the dust. And as we check out on the 15th, you can see it also curves back up, starts heading north, gets a good form, but it does get pushed by the high pressure of the dust to the west towards the Bay of Campeche. Now that's to update on the dust that it keeps pushing it west. And if the GFS was correct, all this moisture would be going up here into the Gulf of Mexico. Plus that next wave that is coming off the coast of Africa, you can see it does still come up towards the Caribbean, but it gets elongated. It gets pulled up towards the Bermuda High and gets stretched out and it don't stay together at all. So hopefully by the time this comes towards our area that it stays a big a group of disorganized thunderstorms and is not really a big deal neither. But when you look at the ensemble of the cyclones for the GFS, it still sees that push towards the Bay of Campeche, towards the Western Caribbean by the 17th. But it still says that after that, it will start heading north. Now, it's a little more west-northwest, like we said a whole long time ago, that if anything happens, this will be towards the western side of the Gulf of Mexico. Even though it's been trending the last three runs towards Louisiana, I've always thought it would either be northern Mexico or potentially a Texas problem. And you can see it shows maybe a something weak coming towards Texas because with all that dust, there's no way it could be anything strong, especially what we've been seeing with a GFS in the 950s. That's crazy strong, especially with some dust and some shear in our Gulf. You can even see the update with the SpaghettiOs from the Ural that as we go towards the 16th, it starts forming up in the same location, but instead of heading north like it showed yesterday, look at them all, they head to the west. And that would be the more than likely outcome. That is what we are seeing with a NASA satellite on the dust. But still, if you look at all the ensembles according to the GFS, you can see right here in your control member that the previous run, it shows that it did agree with the Euro and it was going to go to the West. And when you look at the updated run, your control member right here on the Zero Z, 
It did not go west. It is still confirming that it will go somewhere towards Texas. And it's been trending that a lot lately. And that's exactly where the Farmer's Almanac is showing a potential tropical storm. Even when you look at the update on the ensemble members, you can see that still it's not showing that big glob going to multiple locations. It is showing that westward push, but it's still showing there is a chance for something to still go towards Texas as a 977. And this right here is a Farmer's Almanac. I will put the link in the description for you as well so you can check this out. And the Farmer's Almanac is still predicting that from the 16th through the 19th, they are expecting a tropical storm threat for Texas, Louisiana coast. And it is a very accurate almanac, guys. It's been saying this for quite some time. But I really hope that the Euro is correct because so far it's showing like the GFS believed the Euro, but the update with the GFS is going right back to its original location. So it's still a little too far for the guidance models to pick up on what's going on. But as far as the data shows, the data shows that it would be a westward push, guys. I'm not showing that this will go towards Florida. I'm not showing that this will go towards Louisiana, even though you've been seeing the last three runs have been going straight for you. Do not panic. Do not worry. I believe that will still go to the west. Now, as far as a tropical storm potential for Texas, that's what Farmer's Almanac is seeing. And I believe, if anything, it would be northern Mexico, maybe southern Texas. And I believe it would probably be weaker than a tropical storm. There is a lot of dust going that way. Now, we'll keep you updated on that. That is something that we still need to think about later on. It's still eight days away. It's still a little too far. But we do have the severe weather threat for today. You do have a chance for tornadoes for today, a 2%. Plus, you have chances for wind, which has upgraded. I'm showing at least 50, maybe even 60 miles per hour wind gusts. And it gets weaker as it goes further to the south. And you have chances for hail as well. So for your 2% chance for tornadoes for today, New Orleans, Louisiana, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Shreveport, Louisiana, Little Rock, Arkansas, as well as Jackson, Mississippi. And when you check your elicity values, which you know is your wind direction change with height, as you go through your day, you can see it does get a little strong for southern Arkansas, as well as northern Louisiana. Chances for some long live long track cells coming through, maybe even a spin up of two of a tornado. We can also see as it goes towards Jackson and lower Mississippi that it weakens down. Now you still will have storms come through, still will be a lot of rainfall, not a whole bunch like super flooding. Still have a chance for a tornado for southern Arkansas, northern Louisiana. I don't expect it to be a long-lived, super bad tornado, but it could do a spin-up real quick and go away. And you can see as you go through your morning that it comes in Arkansas real hot and heavy with some nasty cells. All that dark red is indicative to possibility of hail. And it also has chances to form up a tornado. You are getting some shear on those cells as it pushes through, and that's all the way to 9 o'clock this morning then it starts moving to northern louisiana by 11 o'clock and by noon going into mississippi as well and you can see it's still dark cells a lot of precipitation and chances for hail in those cells and they are still getting some shear on them there will be some winds pushing through this but as it goes further to the south you can see it does break apart where you're getting winds right here you see it bowing out but these cells are getting some shear on them that breaks apart from it. So there is chances, possibility for a spin up or two for Southern Arkansas, Northern Louisiana, maybe even for a moment for a little bit for Mississippi as this pushes further south. But once it goes towards New Orleans and Southern Mississippi, you can see with the shear that it really breaks apart. You get one cell that gets a little bit of shear on it, but it's not like it's super bad. Look how it's a lot lighter shear than what you have right before it. Because right before it, it starts getting strong, which is around 3 p.m. And you do have some cells moving through there as well. But after that, it starts weakening down with the shear as this pushes into the Gulf. So you will have some storms. There is a chance for a spin up or two. There's not a super big chance for tornadoes. I think it will be a big wind event as well as some hail. 
but you can also see when you look at your wind gust that it starts picking up 50, even getting over 60 miles per hour wind gust. It says 70, but let's just downgrade a little bit just to be safe and say 60. And that's for central Arkansas by noon. Then as it goes down northern Louisiana, southern Mississippi, you get 50 and 60 miles per hour wind gusts in this system as it pushes through all evening long. All the way to 5 p.m. it starts going towards New Orleans, southern Mississippi, then it starts weakening down and going into the Gulf. So I believe there will be a lot of damage in winds and there could be a spin up or two. Not for long, but it's possible, even if it don't. Damage in winds this high, 60, maybe even 70 miles per hour wind gusts, but just say 60, that's just as bad as a tornado anyway. Also, as this pushes through, it will bring a little over an inch of rainfall. And as it goes through Sunday, it will bring it for southern Alabama, Panhandle, Florida, and southern Florida as well. And northern Washington, Oregon, northern Idaho, you will get some also. And you can see it would be heaviest for northern Idaho. One to two inches, higher elevations of Washington and Oregon getting up to that two inches. Everybody else is less than an inch. But it would be getting an inch to inch and a half for Arkansas, northern to central Mississippi, get a little lighter as you go a little southern. But as it goes to southeastern Mississippi, southern Alabama, and the panhandle of Florida, it's an inch and a half of rainfall also. And this is all the way till Sunday evening because it will carry over right towards Florida and southern Florida, getting a little heavy as well. In southern Florida, you are in the flash flood watch. And you can see this here, your chance for your flash flooding. You're in a marginal in all of this green as well as southern Florida. And you have the slight risk for eastern Oklahoma and for Arkansas as well for today. Now, we'll keep you updated. Remember, it is still a few days away on the tropics. I just want to let you know what the updated information is. I know a lot of y'all has been seeing that this run has been going consecutively towards Louisiana, almost in the same area, three runs in a row. And we haven't seen that yet. So, But most of the information is showing this will be a Western push. So please do not be alarmed by what you've seen in those last three runs. I did see it myself and it was a little alarming. But the trend is starting to go further and further west. And you've seen the update with the NASA satellite. This is going to go just like the first wave. Further to the west, to the Bay of Campeche, and probably a lot of heavy precipitation for Central America. And I will update y'all on that. We're still a few days away before you got to worry about heavy rainfall coming your way. So please relax. It is Friday. Have a great Friday, everybody. God bless every single one of you. I will keep you updated with the new information as it comes out. Take a break from the tropics. I'll see you on Sunday morning. God bless every single one of you. Thank you so much for visiting my channel today. I hope every single one of you have the best Friday possible out there. So let's praise our Lord, amen, today on this beautiful Friday as we go into our great Sabbath. I hope you all have a very great day today. I mean that to every single one of y'all, even y'all out there that don't care too much for the preaching. I love you all, and I pray you listen. Psalm 82. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Selah. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Amen. <laughs> Thank you so much for visiting my channel today. May God's peace and God's love be on every single one of you. And all power, <laughs> all glory does go to Yahweh, God of Jacob, our Father, 
our God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a very great Friday, everybody.